scoop might be unable to dig in the solid ice. Is there a a rasp-like tool yeah. in the in the uh, bucket? that yes. could actually scrape away ice, yes. some fragments of ice, to analyze? That's exactly right. We don't, we don't claim to be able to dig down layer by layer through ice, but we can sample ice for sure. And uh, we have a, a rasp in the back. It's actually the kind of tool used by ice carvers, uh, ice sculptors, uh, to make the fine details. So it, it'll cut the hardest ice. And it throws the chips into the back of the scoop, so you don't have to go around trying to pick them up off the ground. So and what, we're, we've practiced this, and we know we can do it. And, and what, uh, <clears throat> what happens to that, that, those fragments of ice? Will they go into the ovens to be baked yes, and vaporized? Yes, they go into the ovens to be baked, and, and if there's any organic material in it, it'll come out as a, uh, a vapor that we analyze the vapor. Okay. okay, we have time for about two more questions. We'll start one back there, and then we'll take one more up at the front. Hi, Andrea Thompson from Space.com and Space News. Um, I was wondering if you guys officially start living on Mars time now, now that you're down. Oh, it started, yes. <laughs> yeah, you're on Mars time now, too, so. <laughs> okay, we'll take one last question here in the very front. Henry Bortman again from Astrobiology Magazine. Peter, you've uh, mentioned a couple of times this construction of the, the 3D space because the, the arm isn't so smart. Can you explain what that process is actually like? Well, I've been cautioned not to say that the arm's not smart. It's a very smart <laughs> arm. just doesn't quite know where it is yet. <laughs> it's very smart for an arm. It doesn't have any eyes yet. <laughs> Are you, but, are you building this in, in the computer memory on the yes. spacecraft? Yes. We, we have the, the stereo vision we use, uh, and that way we can measure distance, and we can make a 3D terrain, and then the arm knows where to go within that 3D terrain. It's all referenced together into the same reference frame. Uh, but before we do that, you're not quite sure how far away that surface is, and if you think it's one distance and it isn't, you can try and push it through the surface or scrape above the surface. You really have to kind of go uh, stepwise to be sure you know exactly where the surface is with respect to the arm coordinates. So when you say it's not smart, you mean it doesn't have any range finding capabilities? Right. Okay. That's right. Yeah, the, the arm, we, we call them teach points. You have to give it teach points. Right. So it knows where it's been. It's, it's got an excellent memory, <laughs> right? But uh, you have to tell it where it's been, then it remembers really well. That's right. Okay. That's going to be it for tonight's news briefing. Thank you so much for joining us. And tomorrow is a new Sol on Mars, so please do come back. We will hold a briefing at 2 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow, and we will continue holding briefings daily, at least for the near future, at 2 p.m. Eastern time. That uh, lovely color panorama, you'll have to wait until Tuesday for that. But please do come back tomorrow for some more news. And in the meantime, you can follow us on the web at www.nasa.gov slash phoenix. Check there often, and we'll hopefully see you back tomorrow. Thanks for joining us.